Hi, I'm Stan McMurch. I'm here this morning on a residential pool repair and we got called out on a job where there's a skimmer problem, either a clog and or leak. As I said before, the complaint from this customer was no suction on this particular skimmer. At that point, we suspect it's either a collapsed line, a leak, or both. Uh, so we go in and of course we go through the lineup on the pump, check the valves, fittings, everything on the, the pump system, etc. that's easy. We, we go through that whole process. Once it's determined that it is actually in the, in the plumbing, then we hook up test equipment. So right now we have this, this plumbing fixture, the suction line from the skimmer is isolated back at the pump through a, a, a Jandy valve and we have an inflatable plug in that side of the valve back to this skimmer which is isolated from the other skimmer. So this is independent one pipe from this skimmer back to the valve. Right now we got a test fitting down in the skimmer which is a plug that goes in the suction port of the skimmer that has a, a line that runs through the middle of it. Through that line, this line, we're able to induct water or air. And right now I have it set up to put water into that line which will give us a, a hydrostatic test. Uh, the test procedure for that is we're going to test from 10 to 12 psi for a minimum of five minutes. And the reason we use water is water is not compressible. Uh, if we try to test with air, the air can compress and it's going to appear as, a, as though it has a leak. Uh, so right now, if there's no leak in this pipe, I should get a positive lockup on this gauge at 20, 10 to 12 psi. I'm going to bring the gauge up slow. And right there we hit 12 psi and the gauge is dropping quickly. So right now I suspect we have a leak. At this point we go around and we verify our test fittings to make sure that our equipment's not leaking. So in this case we would die test the fitting in the skimmer itself because it's covered with water and we go in there and die test make sure our fitting's not leaking and then go back to the pump and we can put soapy water on that or just listen and see if that plug is fit leaking back at the pump. Uh, so test again We've done all the verification that our fittings aren't leaking. So right now, the gauge is dropping, and we know we got a leak. If there's no leak, this gauge is going to lock up, and we're going to be able to hold 12 psi for five minutes or better. At this point, uh, break out our electronics, and we would induct air to the other side of the system. And this gives us a sound signature now that we can produce underground. Uh, we've got the ditch is full of water, uh, so we leave the water off, and now I can introduce air to this, and it's going to give some gurgling noises, which we would break out our electronics if we can listen underground. In this particular situation, we lucked out and actually heard the water bubbling back here through the ground. So it's behind the apron, and we've already excavated the ditch, and we actually found where the pipe's leaking. Uh, this had a piece of aggregate under the pipe, tree roots push the aggregate up, collapse the pipe, and cause a leak in the pipe, and also a blockage. We can show you now the point that we're at. Uh, we have the test equipment hooked up, we have the ditch dug out, and we have the pipe exposed, getting ready to cut the pipe and conduct a repair. So our next step now is to chop the pipe. We're going to cut the pipe to the right of where that leak is, which brings us back towards the pool. We're going to throw another pressure test from there back to the pool to ensure there's not another leak. And then we're going to replumb from that that leak back to the pump. We remove this section of pipe. We're going to put a, a deep female coupling in there and bond it with the H2O Aqua Bonder glue. Now we're getting ready to conduct the actual repair. Uh, we're going to do a little bit of prep work with these 50 milliliter tubes that we're using today, since it's a small pipe, inch and a half. Uh, we're using this because we don't have the option of having a clean pipe. It's in a wet ditch. There's dirt in there. Uh, this, prob this product is going to take care of that problem because we can bond it wet and with a little bit of dirt in there. We have to do basic cleaning on a pipe with a rag and we can bond this and have full confidence that the product's going to take care of the repair and you can bury it and not have any rework. Uh, today we're going to hand mix it. This product also comes with a mixed nozzle that can be adapted on the, the front and it'll mix for you. 
and give you a precision uh, deposit of the material on the base material that you're trying to weld together. Uh, today we're going to hand mix this on a polypropylene mix board with polypropylene mix sticks. So as you see, this is going to come out as a two-part component. It's a very white component, and there's an accelerator in there that's going to kick this off. You replace the cap. You can save the product that's left in the tube. We're going to mix this up. You have about a two to three minute work time, depending on temperature. The hotter the temperature, the quicker the product's going to kick off. So you want to have all your prep work done ahead of time. Make sure everything's squared away with the joint you're putting in. Mix it up. It's key to make sure that it's mixed properly, thoroughly. Then we're going to take this and spread it like peanut butter right inside our joint. Just butter it right in there. Make sure it's all the way around inside the prep joint, 360 degrees. Now, we can take this right down here in the dirt, in the mud in the ditch on our already wiped off pipe and we're going to be able to make this joint right in the ditch. Slide the joint right on. Now, if I have some left over, I know that joint's sound. It's all the way up inside the female coupling and on the pipe. We have some leftover component. I can swipe it on the outside. And just take your finger and run it around there, 360 degrees. And that's it. You wait 20 minutes, let that cure, and we have a solid joint. Okay, now we've conducted a repair. Uh, we need to know when we can put pressure back on this joint so we can fill the ditch in and you know tell the customer the job's done and we're happy and they're happy. Uh, the way to do this is it's totally relying on temperature. So we take the board that we mixed it on. And just check every once in a while, you'll see this product setting up. Uh, you wait 15 to 20 minutes, temperature depending, you know, depending on temperature. And when that's set up and it's hard on there, then you have confidence that it's the same in the ditch. And you can uh, then pressure test, repressure test, verify that the repair is good, and then go ahead and bury it and be done with the job. It's been approximately 20 minutes since we've completed the repair. Uh, as you can see, the material is hardened, and now we uh, went ahead and reconducted a pressure test on this, proving our repair is good. Uh, once the repair is done, we go ahead from where the repair was made, back to the other side, back to where the initial uh, component was, in this case the skimmer, and we reconduct the pressure test to, to show that our repair is good. Uh, we've done that, and right now we're holding uh, 12 PSI for five minutes. The gauge is locked up and it's holding, so we know our repair is good. At this time, we can disconnect our test equipment and go ahead and backfill the ditch, and the repair is done. So now we're ready to backfill the ditch, and this repair is completed. With that in mind, uh, what we did here, uh, we had two issues that saved this customer money. One was we located the repair the, the break in the pipe was actually behind the pool apron. Uh, so in that fact, we didn't have to cut concrete. Uh, we just had to dig outside the apron, down, excavate to the, where the problem was with the pipe, and then conduct our repair with the H2O Aquabonder glue. Uh, with that said, even if we had to cut the concrete, this repair would have taken maybe a total of four hours. Uh, right now, we're two hours into the repair, uh, with the backfill done and everything, it'll be about two and a half to three hours. Uh, this is a, is a large savings to the customer, and we're able to complete this repair in a timely manner. We have full confidence in it. We proved to the customer it's good. We've done a pressure test. We can move on to the next job.